Hello, I'm Rabbi Elton from the Great Synagogue in Sydney and welcome to From the Rabbi's Bookshelves. There are certain figures in Jewish intellectual history who have a sort of double life and our author today is one of them. He is the Raoul Bag, Rabbi Levi ben Gershon, known as Gersonides to philosophers and also known in the Latin tradition as Magister Leo Hebraeus. And he wrote this book, The Wars of the Lord, Milchamot Hashem. As the Raoul Bag, we know him as a commentator principally on the books of the prophets. If you open any standard rabbinic Bible, you'll find in the section of the prophets the commentary of the Raoul Bag, and he's taken very seriously and very respectfully by all rabbinic commentators since. But his principal work was in fact as an astronomer, a scientist, a mathematician, and as a philosopher. He was a very determined um, follower of Aristotle, and he was a commentator on both the books of Aristotle and his Arabic commentators. He's also followed by Monides, the greatest Jewish philosopher of the early medieval period. Now, Gersonides was born in Provence in 1288 and dies there in 1344. He didn't take any rabbinic position probably because of his controversial positions on some theological questions. For example, almost all rabbinic commentators would say that God has total omniscience. He knows everything that is and will be. But Gersonides thought that God knows all of our choices that we have available to us, all of the options before us, but doesn't know which one we will opt for in the end, because that is based on our own free will. That is a very controversial position, which was argued against by many of the leading Jewish philosophers of his time and soon afterwards, and some even wanted to ban his books. What's remarkable is that he has survived as a treasured rabbinic commentator on the Bible, even though his philosophical positions are somewhat controversial. It's clear from this book, which was translated very recently as part of a rediscovery of his philosophical contribution, that he is wrestling with the tension between his loyalty to Jewish tradition and his philosophical ideas. Let me give you two contrasting passages which show the way that tension is evidenced. For example, in his introduction to the books of the War of the Lord, he says this, It is therefore evident that if reason causes us to affirm doctrines that are incompatible with a literal sense of scripture, we are not prohibited by the Torah to pronounce the truth of these matters, for reason is not incompatible with the true understanding of the Torah. In other words, if you come by philosophical deduction to a view that is not compatible with a literal reading, you must read the Torah in a different way, because the Torah, being true, will always be compatible with a true statement. That's quite radical. That would give you permission to reinterpret large amounts of the Bible, which Gesundes actually does. However, this is the way he concludes the first part of his masterpiece. He says this, Adherence to reason is not permitted if it contradicts religious faith. Indeed, if there were such a contradiction, it is necessary to attribute this lack of agreement to our own inadequacy. He's not saying something entirely different, but it's certainly a different emphasis. Whereas before he says, if we deduce by reason something which is incompatible with the plain reading of Torah, we have to reinterpret it, so we should do. Here he's saying, if you believe that your views are not compatible with Torah, trust that Torah is true. If you can't make them align perfectly, it's because of your own inadequacy. Do not throw out the Torah because your philosophical views don't seem to align with it. These are two sides of the same coin, but one is more radical and one is more conservative. On the one hand, he says, if you can't make your views align, interpret the Torah allegorically. On the other hand, he's saying, but don't dismiss the Torah entirely. The Torah is always true, the Torah is always our guide, and our philosophical views, if they are correct, which they may not be, will always be in conformity with it if we truly understand the Torah. Thanks for joining.